Hey guys, welcome to the board. I'm just gonna start off by doing a very standard start with Stark. Gonna move that ship into the narrow sea, going to muster in Winterfell, and White Harbor is either gonna pick up a supply or hang out in car hold for some power going throughout the game. I do send, well actually I go to send, an alliance request with Baratheon, but it looks like he's already sent me one. And for Greyjoy, I kind of take a little gander at them. I want to also ally with them, but if they're already allied with Lannisters, it kind of makes that alliance a little dubious because they kind of have to go in one direction or the other eventually. Baratheon immediately moves into Crackclaw Point along with Storm's End, and a round one taking of Storm's End is very aggressive towards Martell, who has that mustering ready to go to fight back. Round one, Lannister going for Sunset Sea. This is really not going to go well with Greyjoys. That does pull some of the aggression from Greyjoys off of me and towards Lannister. I'm going to go ahead and move into the Shivering Sea first because Baratheon's already committed their ships out and this allows me a chance to see if Greyjoys are going for Moat Kaelin. Martell just moving from the Salt Shore into Yornwood, kind of getting that core area established for them. Nice opening here for Martell. Greyjoy moving away from Greywater Watch back into Pike. This is a really nice setup in order to take areas around Iron Man's Bay, which I'm not really contesting against right now. And this is a sure shine, sure shine. <laughs> this is a sure sign that the Greyjoys will be going after the Lannisters, and that should free me up to be safe with Moat Kaelin. Tyrell is moving out of High Garden into the Dornish Marches in the Arbor. I really like the Arbor. It's just such a nice little spot to gather power from. As long as you're not contested in the West Summer Sea and you can maybe be friends with the Martell. And there goes River Run with Lannister. That's going to be a little of a bit of a problem between them and Greyjoys. But that takes the pressure off of me from both the Greyjoy direction and the Baratheon direction. I do briefly consider moving this footman all the way down into the Erie because both of my potential enemies are occupied. But I want to give them a little time to duke it out with their newfound enemies before I put any pressure on them. Martell moving out from the Sea of Dorne to East Summer Sea. Greyjoy going for the dream start of Iron Man's Bay, Sea Guard, and River Run, giving them a total of seven mustering if that card comes up. And if it does, that's a bit of a problem for me because I'm the only person in a position to really go help Lannisters in that battle, and I prefer not to. But at the very least, I would like to wait until their best cards are out of their hands, so I get some easy wins there. Lannisters with a retreat into Harrenhal. They did lose one footman in the process, which is unfortunate. Tyrell moves one of their footmen back to Old Town, which is an excellent two mustering castle. I really enjoy their start. I'm going to go ahead and muster one footman in Winterfell. That way I can just really spread out and take a lot of the north. And I'm also going to grab one ship to the right in the Shivering Sea. I would be tempted to start going and getting some ships to the left, but with Lannister being in Sunset Sea, combined with the land war that they currently have going on, I think Greyjoy and Lannisters can just will not be able to find a peaceful arrangement anytime soon. So I'm going to let them duke it out for a little while. The Martell is getting a siege engine and the one ship in Sea of Dorne is definitely not going to bold well for Baratheon since the most likely target is Storm's End. I suppose they could go to Starfall, but there's really not a fight there, so you probably want to go for a knight. And this really tells me that the Baratheons are also going to be occupied with the Martells for a while. As we look at the Westerosi cards, we have Adjusting Supply, which is really great because Stark starts off with a low amount of supply. The lowest out of all the houses, actually. Grabbing power, meh. And then Raid Orders Can't Be Played doesn't really affect me too much. There is an unfortunate downside to this opening, which is Winterfell. I really want to move all those troops out, but it's also the only place that I have to muster. Ugh, conundrums. Oh well, I think the obvious move here is putting a support in the Shivering Sea. I don't know what else Shivering Sea would even do. I do think my enemies are really preoccupied, so it should be pretty safe for me to move out all my units from Winterfell and Widow's Maker and just take a ton of ground. I, I, I see ground. I should probably say supply tokens and areas to consolidate power. I might as well put a defense token in the narrow sea. I don't expect Baratheon to attack, and I don't know why I would attack them. It looks like Martells are about to go tussle with Baratheon for me. If I'm doing my math right, my narrow sea is protected by a defense of five in total. Two from defense, one from the ship, and then two more from support. 
So I wonder how much this decision to attack Martel versus me was about me having that defense token versus Martel's three. Unfortunately for Baratheon, the Red Viper gets played, which does kill off one of his ships here. And on the bright side, it does get rid of the most powerful card the Martels have. Lannister is trying to take back River Run. Bailing gets played though, so it's not going to happen. Thankfully, they don't lose anything. This would be a really good time for me to attack Greyjoys if I wanted to, because their best two cards have been played. I'm going to move in Widow's Watch first, because Winterfell has more punch to it if needed. I am tempted to go to the Eyrie, but right now I'm in a really good position with the Greyjoys and Lannisters preoccupied and Baratheons and Martellus preoccupied. No reason to make myself look like more of a threat than I am. So let me go ahead and just move up into Carhold in order to generate some power going forward. Uh-oh. So Martell is attacking Shipbreaker's Bay, and that's a routed unit. So if he wins this combat, that means Baratheon will have zero ships and be really, well, vulnerable to Martells taking pretty much all of their territory. I may actually have to pop my head down there just to keep the Martells from winning. Greyjoy moving into the Golden Sound. Tyrell's moving into Prince's Pass, which I would consider that probably part of Martell's territory. And I'm hoping this will stir up a little bit of conflict between them so I don't have to go down there. Lannister's trying to take back the Golden Sound. Not great odds for them here. Lannister playing Tyrion, which forces Asha not to be played. He also has another card, which has a sword to it, and using the Valyrian Seal Sword wins this combat, which takes out one of two remaining ships from the Lannister player, and this really opens up Lannisport for the pickings. Time to move Winterfell. Taking Moat Galen's the obvious move. This protects me from get, losing that to Greyjoys and then getting raided in Winterfell. Between there, it's do I want Stony Shore for the supply or do I want Castle Black for the power? And as I move into the Eyrie, there's a ton of supply down there. So I think I'm going to end up going with Castle Black for now. Martell's coming in with a Siege Engine and Knight to take Storm's End. My concern here is that they can propel themselves from Storm's End straight into Dragonstone next round. And that puts the Martells in a really strong position that I might have to intervene in. And I prefer not to. Patchface getting played, which will remove one of the Martell's cards. Thankfully, they've already used um, the Red Viper, which is their strongest card. So they just lose their second strongest card. Greyjoy is coming out to take Iron Man's Bay, which is currently unoccupied. The Tyrells just moving around from Old Town to Three Towers. And Yornwood moving into the Bodeway. Taking a look at the Westerosi phase. We do get mustering. Um, this is unfortunate because this probably means I'm going to have to intervene in some way against the Greyjoys. Unfortunately, this also means I may have to intervene against the Martells at the same time to prevent them from winning. Because Baratheon only has Dragonstone and Crackclaw to muster from. But that should give them a little bit of a punch. And the NPC sto token still being on King's Landing should help out a little bit from the Martells advancing. Mustering a ship into the Bay of Ice will open up Flint's Finger to me, along with another little footman in Winter's Fell to give me a little extra punch when needed. Moat Kaelin, I'm going to put a ship in the Narrow Sea with, and White Harbor, I'm just going to put a footman there. That way I have another area to muster as needed. Martel is grabbing a couple of ships and infantry, nothing too big here. The biggest problem is that they've already pushed into Baratheon Sea so hard, but I think there's a chance to recover there. When, when you look at the Greyjoys, though, it looks like they're going to get a siege engine and take Lannisport this round, which would effectively knock Lannister out of the game. They would still have Harrenhal, but there's not a lot of hope left there. High Garden and Old Town picking up a nice number of troops. This is a great round for Tyrell being able to muster, and then we're also about to bid. Although I try to convince the Lannister player not to bid because getting Greyjoys, the ability to go up on the Messenger Raven track, would really be detrimental to them. I just go ahead and bid nothing for the Iron Throne. I really don't care about it. In some cases, I actually like going last because I get to see what the other players are doing. Also, I just don't have a lot of power, and I want to use all of that trying to get as much as I can up on the Messenger Raven track, so I at least get one Special Order token. Same thing with the Valyrian Steel Sword. I don't want to waste any of my very little power that I have voting on this. 
Unfortunately, it does end up going to the Greyjoys, which is definitely not the player we want having it. Um, yeah, I vote almost as all my power against the King's Court track. That's the one that I want to win. But compared to the other players, I really do not have a lot of power at all, and I'm really regretting that. This really comes down to the Iron Throne Hoarder deciding, and Lannister kind of wants to boost me up a little bit, so he puts me in the one spot. I spend my last power to fight the Wildlings, really just hoping that I don't get the least power spent. Surprisingly, we actually win this, which we actually all bid one on. We completely went even. Lannisters obviously break this for themselves and they get one of their house cards back. Should help them out a little bit. One of the things that I want to do for sure is a mustering in Winterfell. One of the things you can do in the game is a secret pact, and I'm trying to tell Baratheon that I'm going to support him from the Narrow Sea. I'm going to do a raid token in Moat Kaelin as well, hoping to catch Greyjoys off guard and, you know, knock him down a peg. Carhold does have a consolidated power in it. With White Harbor, I think I'm going to move. I'm not 100% sure where though yet. For the Shivering Sea, I'm in a bit of a conundrum because I only have one support token. I don't really think that I'm going to get attacked though, so let me put that in the Bay of Ice and maybe that will help out the Lannisters a little bit. Shivering Sea, I'm just going to put a defense token there. Obviously no one's going to attack me, you just, you have to place an order down. A lot of raid orders getting played this round. Greyjoy, I think, misclicking and not getting rid of the support in Stony Sap or maybe not seeing it. Moat Kaelin, there is no Consolidate Power on Seaguard, which is what I was ho really hoping for. And then the rest of the stuff isn't really too impactful. I was really trying to convince Baratheon to attack Shipbreaker's Bay and then I would help him out. Unfortunately, I don't think he gets the message and I think he t interpreted my request as I'm going to attack Shipbreaker's Bay and I want his support. Heron Hall attacking River Run. This is a nice six on three combat for Lannisters. And I think this is a really good example of how Greyjoy can get a very strong early game advantage against the Lannisters, but in the long run, the Lannisters can really come back and decimate them pretty hard. Here with three swords, just annihilating the army there. I do have a chance to help out the Lannisters as best I can here, and both myself and the Tyrells do support him. However, one interesting thing that I, I notice is that it doesn't actually tell you who's supporting who. You both reveal it at the same time, and I didn't even know that was a rule in the board game. Unfortunately, the Greyjoys do have Victorian, and that just basically says I win when I'm attacking at sea. So, yeah. The Tyrells moving up to Sea Road Marshes, which would normally be pretty aggressive against Lannisters, but I think Lannisters have some bigger problems right now. And the Kingswood moving into the Reach. Even with Greyjoy taking Lannisport, that would only put them at four castles, leaving that still someone else's problem to stop Greyjoy. Moving into Mountains of the Moon would help me take Eerie into next round, so that's, I'm going to go with that. I don't really capture it too well, but Yornwood moves one footman into Storm's End, just for a subsequent run up to Dragonstone, I'm assuming, because you can do the little double march. And the Greyjoy is doing the same thing, pulling back from Seaguard into Pike, leaving Seaguard really defenseless for me. That's nice. The Tyrells moving back out of Prince's Pass and just leaving a little token there. Martell attacking from Storm's Inn into Crackclaw Point. And I'm actually really happy about this because I can at least help out Baratheon a little bit here from the Narrow Sea. Now, I'm not going to help out too much. It's only going to be two, but I'm, I'm happy to stave off Martell a little bit. And my assistance is aided because Dorn Martell moves Baratheon down on the Messenger Raven track, which subsequently moves me up. Unfortunately for Martell, they are going to lose their siege engine from losing this attack, and that, that stinks. Greyjoy coming into Lannisport with a rather deadly force here. It's not looking good for Lannisters. Thankfully, they do have the Hound left, so they don't lose anyone in this combat. They just retreat back into the Stony Sep, so it could be worse. Greyjoy is picking up one of Lannister's ships from the uh, port in Lannisport. I think from a sea perspective, even if I wanted to, I couldn't push into Sunset Sea and hold it, but I could keep Flint's Finger, Moat Kaelin, and potentially Seaguard away from Greyjoys, which would keep them from winning and actually really helped me a lot. 
So for my mustering here, let me focus on my ground forces and just pick up a knight instead of trying to win the sea battle against Greyjoys. Yeah, it seems like a good idea not to try to win sea battles against pirates. All right, so going into the Westeros phase, we have Winter is Coming, which gets redrawn. We get some power, and then support tokens cannot be played. Seeing a mustering come up is not a good thing, especially with Greyjoy owning so much. But they actually didn't leave anything in Seaguard, which is pretty painful, and they only have one house card left. Hello, Tyrell with two siege engines coming out on the board. I don't know what they're going after, but they're going to get it. The Baratheon's definitely getting a lot more punch here in terms of ships, and I do let them know that I will support them in Shipbreakers Bay. For my own mustering, I want one footman in White Harbor just so I can muster there as needed and just put any order really is useful. Moat Kaelin, I want to get another footman because I'm considering pushing it to Sea Guard or Greywater Watch to a lesser extent. And having someone behind to throw down orders would really help. One of the problems with Stark is that you need both boats on the left and right hand side of the board. And you can only have six boats in the game total. So I'm starting to push up against that supply limit. And it's difficult to hold both sides. I go ahead and upgrade a knight to give myself a little land punch. And I go ahead and get my one ship. This does force it into the harbor just because I'm up against supply limits. I would much rather have it in the Bay of Ice. After seeing this muster here from Martell, I'm pretty sure Martell has been pushed back at least enough that they're not going to win anytime soon. I'm much more happier with how much power I have now compared to the other houses in case a bidding comes up. I'm not sure how I feel about support orders not being played. So I go ahead and do a March plus one in Winterfell. That way I can attack both sides as needed. A mustering in White Harbor will get me at least one troop. Moat Kaelin, I really want to take Seaguard if it's just going to sit out there and be free real estate. And then up in Carhold, I have one Consolidate Power just to generate a couple of crowns. Look at the left side of the board. I can't play support this round. I don't think Raid would do me any good because I don't think he's going to try to Consolidate Power or anything like that in Flint's Finger. So I might as well throw down a, a Defense Holder. For the Bounds of the Moon, I'm not really entirely sure what to do with that. As I look, I realize that I can take Castle Black and move that down to help me out with Greyjoys. Putting that second Consolidate Power instead in the Winterfell port that's next to the Bay of Ice. Mountains of the Moon, I'm just going to go ahead and do a, I think a raid there and um, put a defense in the Narrow Sea. The raiding I'm putting in the Mountains of the Moon, just in case something gets played in Crack Claw, which can get me a little extra money. It's kind of getting at the point in the game where I can't be friendly with everyone all the time. And then I raid order in Shivering Sea just because I have to play something. <laughs> so there's a ton of raid orders played out, and I'm guessing at least some of them were just played because there was no other option. But we just go through and just every single one of them gets wasted. Lannister's really coming back with a vengeance from River Run into Lannister Port with a siege engine and two knights. They are not messing around. This is a rough defeat for Greyjoy. On one hand, this is their last house card, so they get their cards back, which is very, very nice. Unfortunately, in the process, they are losing their siege engine from Lannister Port because it can't retreat. And Cersei is going to remove the command token from Pike, so Pike can't move out this round, leaving Greyjoy really vulnerable. And with those two knights retreating into Flint's Finger, it's really looking tasty for me to attack there. Oh, <gasps> Greyjoys, how dare you betray our alliance? <laughs> Not that I would ever, ever betray our alliance against you. When I retreat from here, the sad thing is that as I take a look at their cards, I don't think I can win this. And when I retreat, I'm going to break my supply limit, losing that ship. Now, yeah, I could play someone and then they could not play Balin and I could risk it, but I don't really think it's that important to me. So let me go ahead and just throw away Catelyn and just bank on them playing Balin and then I'll get them later on in the game. I do <laughs> dislike how the game's like, oh, you can choose where to retreat to even though there's only one option. And after I retreat there, it just blows up my ship for me. I feel like it was rubbing it in a little bit. The Tyrell is innocently taking Blackwater, and then Baratheon goes from the Reach into the Bone Way, but there's a really quick play, like I don't even have to edit out these two choosing these cards, <laughs> of Ariana, 
which prevents Baratheon from moving in and just makes them retreat back into the Reach. My thinking here is that Seaguard's free real estate, they can move from Flint's Finger into Seaguard to attack, but in order to take it, they would have to use Euron, and I can, I like, I have cards in order to defend losing my knight, so sure, let's risk it. Martell's moving for a Dragonstone, which will put them at four castles, still safely far away from the seven they need in order to win. I'm not too worried about this. The downfall is that in doing so, the knight has nowhere to retreat, and the Martell player can pick up the two ships that are in port there. Thankfully for the Baratheon player, they've already kind of exited the game because they, uh, they just left because I don't think they believe they could win. Lannisters moving to take back River Run, giving them kind of their initial starting position, or really similar to it. Greyjoys marching on River Run. I'm glad they did this because Seaguard is a really, really difficult castle for Stark to hold on to, especially in this situation. I only have Moat Kaelin that I can support from, so I'm holding on to it in a tenuous situation at best. Greyjoys use Euron. That leaves them with their two best house cards out again and gives me a chance to push into them. The only one they have left that's really good is Victorian. Victorian? I'm probably saying that wrong. So I'm going to have a hard time taking anything by sea from them. Tyrell's moving that siege engine from Old Town into Dornish March. And the AI just burning the move in Blackwater. Not really sure why. Now's a really great time for me to take the Eerie because no one from Shipbreaker's Bay is going to come in and take the Narrow Sea. There's just one ship from Martell. So I'm not going to end up getting stranded in the Eerie. The downfall is that I'm going to have to move every unit that I have from Winterfell into the Eerie in order to win that battle. And that does leave me vulnerable to the Greyjoys attacking Winterfell, which makes me nervous. But, you know, you got to take some risk. <laughs> Speaking of only having one ship in Shipbreaker's Bay, making me comfortable. Oh, look, a unit that I can move into Winterfell. How perfect. All right, so at this point, I'm pretty sure Martell heard me say that I was really happy about only one ship being there. I'd actually like to be able to monster a ship on the left side of the board somehow in order to push back Greyjoy a little bit, but I'll take what I can get. Let me go ahead and just upgrade this into a knight because I do only have the ability to muster two more ships and being able to take the land over in Crack Claw may be useful. All right, so for the Westerosi phase, we have nothing happens, uh, potential bid and no consolidate power orders can be played looks like we're bidding i couldn't care less about the iron throne so i'm not going to throw a single token on that looking at the power of the other players i'm actually doing really well especially compared to last time i would like to pick up the valyrian seal blade but i don't need it i know for sure i'm going to have some combats coming up I am extremely pleased with this outcome because this is going to leave the Greyjoys very, very weak relative to me. And I suspect the Lannisters are not going to be inclined to put them very high up. I definitely want to be higher on the Messenger Raven. I think out of all the tracks, the Messenger Raven is the most important. Having two power tokens left is really important because if for some reason I think I can see two castles, it would be really embarrassing not to have the power tokens to leave behind in order to get the win. Having the plus two defense token along with the support from Moat Kaelin may let me hold on to Seaguard. Nothing can raid that support, which is good. I want to move from the Eerie. I don't think the Martells are going to go on the offensive this round. There's a potential for me to take Crack Claw. So let me go ahead and raid here just in case they do support from their ships. And it'll also slow down their offensive in general. Oh no, I definitely, I definitely don't want to defend in the Eerie. I definitely want to move. It is the minus one, so if I throw a support into Mountains of the Moon, that'll help me if anything goes down in Crack Claw. I'm hoping I can move Winterfell to take something and then push back into the Bay of Ice from the Winterfell port. Support from the Shivering Sea should make sure that I don't lose Winterfell from the Greyjoys, depending on how things play out. That is a bit of a concern. It is rather unfortunate that I can't play any Consolidate Power Orders. So I think White Harbor and Carhold are just going to get defense orders, mainly because I have no other orders to give them. It's unlikely they get attacked, though. Heron Hall getting raided. Um, not really sure what they could have gotten rid of that would have been useful, though. 
I'm looking at the Greyjoy's cards and it looks like I have a chance at taking back Bay of Ice, which is nice. I was actually kind of hoping that the Tyrells would raid the support order from Sunset Sea to make that a little bit easier on me. I am a little concerned about the Martells attacking me. I don't want to have my unit stranded in the Eerie, but the raid order is not going to help with that at all. So that's a concern for later. Sun Sphere with a raid on it. Uh, that's obviously not going to be too worthwhile. And then Golden Sound raiding Sea Road Marches, which actually could come up. Lannisters attacking before they get attacked from Lannisport. And I think this is a really good example as to why, yeah, you can get the upper hand as great joy early on. But in the long run, you're, you're probably going to lose the war against the Lannisters or it's going to be too bloody to be worthwhile. Another really devastating use of Cersei, which gets rid of the March Order from Flint's Finger, really locking those units down. And then Great Joy chooses to retreat into Greywater Watch, which allows me the ability to kind of kill off those units if I can somehow get there. Hmm. The Tyrells moving into High Garden from Three Towers for a double move. I assume they're going to go for the Reach. And the AI is just kind of burning a token. Oh, actually, the player's back now. When you're playing online, if you get either disconnected or you just leave, you get replaced by an AI. So I'll do this first because I want to see what Martell does. And there's a chance that he attacks me from Shipbreaker's Bay. My expectation going into this is that I'm going to have to play like Edder to win this battle. But for some reason, he doesn't support himself. And I, I don't know if that's a misclick or what. Although maybe he's just trying to convince me not to kill off his ship by playing a lower card. Ah. Uh, Darn. So I played Rob. Uh, I probably could have played something a little smaller, but there was a chance if I did that he could win this. And I really wanted to get the ship mobility on the left side back so I could take Flint's Finger. If I get Flint's Finger and Crack Claw, I win. Good. I get to see what the Martell ships are doing. And this fight is going to be absolutely devastating if the Baratheons lose because they're going to lose every single ship that they have. Leaving them, I think, with just a couple footmen in the Reach and a uh, Knight in Crackclaw. This is a really good move by Martell because it completely opens up Baratheon's castles to them and will get them the victory really soon. I think by not attacking me, though, I can get to Flint's Finger and Crackclaw or maybe think of something else before they get to their castles. Oh, no. Greyjoy is reinforcing Flint's Finger. Yeah, that's going to be a difficult fight. The Tyrells are attacking from High Garden into the Reach, which, uh, yeah, definitely puts Baratheon in a everyone's beating them up situation. It's a total of 12, which may be the highest I've ever seen. And Patchface taking away Marjorie Tyrell. I feel like Marjorie Tyrell should have some sort of special ability related to, like, the people. She was really well liked. I could attack Crackclaw potentially and probably win this but with me being at six castles it would then have everyone at the table going oh kill stark plus this is a minus one march order so ideally you want to attack from a different position and use this to just move your troops around so i'm going to move two knights back to winterfell surprisingly the npc characters in king's landing haven't been destroyed yet so martell's going to go attack them so with Winterfell, I went to attack Greywater Watch because I can kill that knight because it's already routed. It's an easy target. And if I leave it there, Greywater Watch can then raid Moat Kaelin next round. I want to leave behind those two knights in Winterfell because that'll let me attack either side of the board, depending. And I'm really just throwing away a card here because no matter what I play, I will win this fight. And the worst one that I have is uh, Roderick. So for the Westerosi phase, we get an adjustment of supply, which I believe Baratheon then has to kill off some troops in excess. And then we're going to do Clash of Kings, but none of us have any power. We're The, the highest we have is two between Tyrell, Greyjoy, my, and myself. Oh no. Oh, this is really smart by Greyjoy, actually. They took the Iron Throne first, and knowing that everything's going to be really tight, this could actually really come in handy. This, however, creates problems for me because they're not going to want me high up on the fiefdom or the messenger raven track. With one token here, though, I'm hoping I get at least decently high. I will for sure at least outdo Greyjoy. And of course, the Greyjoys pick the Tyrells. Fortunately, this means I will still break ties against Greyjoys. 
and I really don't like spending my last token on the King's Court, but I want something from this. The concern that I have is I'm going to have to move out of an area and not going to leave something behind in order to retain control. And that's going to be like the game-breaking poor decision. Ugh. And no March plus one orders, which I really need in order to take my two castles. I'm not really sure this is a round where I'm going to be able to take my two castles. And it might be a good idea to consolidate myself. It looks like Baratheon's got all of his cards back. That might put more pressure on Martell. I'm going to do a March order in ARC just in case I can take the area around Dragonstone. And let me go ahead and do Mustering and Winterfell just to grab some more troops going into the next round and hope that Martell can't finish it out this round. I think Consolidating Power in Carhold and the Eerie will both make it so I don't have that embarrassing moment where I can't leave a power token behind to finish out the game and retain control of the area I left from and also just protect myself in case a bidding comes up again. I'm going to go ahead and move out of White Harbor. I'm not really sure where to, but the Footman in White Harbor is not really doing me any good. And I'm hoping to end it next round, so having a mustering area isn't too important for me. I already have one of my special orders on mustering in Winterfell this round. And the second one would slightly help me better if I did a plus two defense in Seaguard and just did a regular support in Moat Kaelin. So let me switch those around. For Greywater Watch, I really am going to be surprised if this actually goes through and doesn't get raided. But if it does, it's going to make Seaguard really hard to take. So let me go ahead and chance the support. For my fleets in the Shivering Sea and the Bay of Ice, I'm just going to throw a defense on there. They're really not well protected, but Greyjoy is kind of out of their good house cards. So they may be less inclined to go after me. And I'm, I mean, obviously no one's going to attack me in the Shivering Sea. For the Mountains of the Moon, let me take a chance at raiding Crack Claw. Maybe something good will be there. Ideally, a Consolidate Power or something. Uh, now that I think about it, yeah, I think the support's just going to get raided. So let me switch out that for a defense token. I don't want to lose Greywater Watch either because that will allow a raid against the Moat Kaelin support. So the Lannisters don't really have anything good to raid. The Baratheons end up raiding my support in the Mountains of the Moon. Rude. The support in the Reach gets raided by Martells. And for my support, I don't really have anything to raid in the Shivering Sea. Lastly, the Martells just ditch their Shipwrecker Bay raid. They don't have anything good to raid. The Greyjoy is moving out of the Golden Sound a little bit to provide some additional support to the neighboring areas. I'm a little worried about Greywater Watch, but there's a lot of support and defense there, so... I think Lannister was just getting rid of this token to see more of what Greyjoy does. Um, it's a smart move. I think with the Tyrells taking Starfall, which was undefended, and then Baratheon taking Storm's End, this really knocks Martell out of the running and frees me up to take my time to get my 7th castle. The Martell's really demonstrating the mobility that both can give you moving all the way from King's Landing down into Starfall. Oh, wow. And they both play their four cards. Mace the Ace taking it through Fiefdom Tie, sending the Martells running all the way back to King's Landing. So I think I can move from White Harbor into Moat Kaelin, and that will provide enough support that I won't be losing Seaguard this round. So Flint's Finger decides to attack River Run. They, don't, they just attack with the two knights, leaving Flint's Finger very vulnerable. If they win this, this means the Siege Tower will be destroyed and will be a kind of first strike defense. I do really enjoy Siege Towers and they definitely have their place, but when you get into a war like this, you just lose them so often. It's kind of more worth it to just build up your knights. Lannister retreating back into Lannisport with their remaining footmen. The Tyrell is just moving back into the Reach, kind of leaving Sea Road marches up for grabs. So from Sunspear, one of these footmen end up moving all the way into Kingswood, and the other one attacks Storm's End. I think they know they're going to lose this fight, but it's safe for them to lose it, and they're going to march back to Sunspear where they want a unit anyhow. So this is a really good example of just cycling through your cards that maybe you don't want, or your weaker ones, just getting them out of the way. I really like to move into Shipbreaker's Bay because that'll open up Dragonstone along with, you know, having Crack Claw and maybe even going into Storm's End if that's vulnerable. But I think I would overextend and with Flint's Finger looking so vulnerable and Crack Claw looking vulnerable, 
I don't think I, I don't think there's a need to risk it. So let me just move back into the Shivering Sea. The reason being is I can support from the Shivering Sea. So having the ship there is actually safer in case someone attacks with two swords. And it really just makes me feel like I'm not wasting the March order. Man, who let Greyjoys get uh, special order tokens? They end up mustering in Pike. They turn a footman into a siege tower and then they get a boat. Taking a look at the Tyrells, they end up mustering as well in the West Summer Sea and getting two boats, although it's hard to catch it. They have a mighty armada of four. Now that I'm going for the win and just trying to grab those remaining two castles, I think it's time for some siege engines. I'm really happy to see mustering here because this means I can grab even more siege engines just to go for the win. Unfortunately, I'm not happy to see that Flint's Fingers just got a knight, but it should be okay. And River Run also just got upgraded a little bit. Heron Hall getting upgraded to a knight and a siege engine showing up in Lannisport, probably to go take River Run back. Wow. Uh, so rapid fire mustering here. I, I can't really keep up with it all. Um, thanks to call out, Crackclaw Point gets a footman reinforced to it. And Dragonstone gets a siege tower, which I'm not too worried about the siege tower. The bigger call out is that Shipbreaker's Bay doesn't get farther boats in it. So that makes me feel a little safer from losing the narrow sea. I kind of feel like the Iron Throne needs something to balance it out a little better because going first can sometimes be really good. But in cases like this, you get to see what all of your opponents are doing before you decide what you're mustering. So I can get a lot of ships in the Bay of Ice. I build two of them specifically here, knowing that Greyjoy doesn't have a lot of ships to counter that, which is just fantastic and really opens up Flint's Finger to me. From here, I'm going to upgrade that footman into a knight in Moat Kaelin. That way I provide better support into Sea Guard and Greywater Watch. For the Eerie, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that into a siege engine. It leaves it really vulnerable to attack, but I don't see anywhere that they can attack from. The Narrow Sea, I think, is defended well enough. White Harbor, I'm just going to grab a footman there. And an additional footman in Sea Guard. It's going to leave me wasting one of my musters there, but you can't have everything. The in-game chat goes, don't bid, you're going to give Stark the game if you do. So we end up collecting power instead, putting me at 9, and I'm pretty happy with that. As I look at the wildling attack here, I'm kind of tempted to just go like 8 and hope that I get highest bidder because I'm going all in on next round a little bit. But I decide against it just in case, and I'm really glad that I didn't because if I would have bid 8, Martell's one would have put it at nine and we still would have lost. And then I would have lost the remaining available power, which means if I move out of say the Eerie, I wouldn't have had any power to leave behind and retain control of it. I think Winterfell is set up pretty well to take Flint's finger. The Eerie has the siege engine to attack into Crackclaw, which will certainly help, but it's a little bit more of an iffy situation. I want to find something to support it. I want all my troops around Sea Guard so I can hold on to that and Moat Kaelin. Let me send White Harbor over into the Erie to help attack Crackclaw. I can't lose the Narrow Sea, so I do a support from the Shivering Sea, a defense into the Narrow Sea. That provides a defense of four, which is pretty good. I'm going to throw in a raid for Mountains of the Moon because I think I'm going to be lacking in support tokens. And Carhold, I might as well consolidate in case it goes another round. Seaguard is the most important area to defend, so that gets my special defense token. I'm going to support that from Moat Kaelin as well. And Bay of Ice also gets a defense token. That should be a defense of four ships. If I lose that, I can't take Flint's Finger. Raiding here, I don't think Flint's Finger is going to get anything worth raiding. And it's probably going to get a defense token, so I can probably get away with consolidating power just in case it goes another round. Wow, I really didn't expect a raid from Iron Man's Bay. Oh well, I'd rather see that than a defense order. The Tyrell is just raiding a raid in the Boneway, and that area of the map is actually just raid central. Kingswood getting raided by Storm's End and Baratheon. They're trying really hard to swap positions, the Martells and Baratheons. After a couple of burned raid orders that don't really do much, we finally get back to Harrenhal raiding Blackwater Bay. This does technically break their alliance, but in round seven of the game, do alliances mean anything really? With the Greyjoys being higher up on the Iron Throne, this means that they can go on the offensive against those siege towers before Lancers have a chance to use them. 
This helps me out a lot because it gets you rid of Euron, which is one of their two best cards and should open up Flint's Finger really easily to me. The Lannisters decide to retreat into the Stony Sep. Unfortunately, the Greyjoys still have Balin and Victarion, so I'm still going to have to really outnumber them in Flint's Finger. Wow, the Tyrells moving their giant armada into the East Summer Sea. That is a total of five versus one. I think they're going to win this one. Oh, I guess support brings it up to five versus three. Using Sir Loras, which would give them another March Order. Unfortunately, Ariana is like the kryptonite to Sir Loras. So the Tyrell fleet has to retreat back into the West Summer Sea. And while the Martells have to give up that ground still, they lose the ability of Loras. Okay, Baratheon, yeah, if you want to just run right out of Crockclaw Point and leave it to me, that sounds good to me. Uh, I am actually kind of looking around in disbelief here. Uh, like, is am I missing something? Uh, Lannisters end up supporting the Baratheons in this fight. With Brienne getting played, this ends up getting the win for Baratheon and even kills off that one little footman. Ah, uh, poor little footman. So Crackclaw is just wide open with only a siege engine to defend. And I could take Flint's Finger, but I want to stall a little bit because Pike has a siege engine waiting to take Flint's Finger back. And it's possible that someone is in a position to attack Crackclaw as well. I, I really want to move this White Harbor down into the Erie, but I'm restricted by supply. I can, however, move it into Winterfell. So let me go ahead and do that. Oh good, there goes the order from Pike, which could take back Flint's Finger. The Tyrells are being a little indecisive here at first, wanted to go to Dornish Marches, but decided to split up their forces between the Marshes and the Reach. I imagine wanting to double move from the Reach to take King's Landing, probably. The Martells are trying to take back Storm's End, and without anywhere to retreat, this could really hurt the Baratheons. Yep, and the Martells take it, and without anywhere to retreat to, that just kills off everything at Storm's End. So taking a look around the board, the only March Orders remaining could potentially threaten Flint's Finger, but can't get to Crack Claw. So I'm going to take that one first, because no one can come and take back that or the Eerie. Taking a look at the cards remaining for Martell, they only have Doran, so this should be a pretty easy win for me. Unfortunately, they can move me down on the Fiefton track which might make it more difficult to take Flint's Finger, but I still think it's smart to do this one first because there's no chance of reciprocation. And I might as well ditch the Blackfish. It's the weakest card that I have, and I'll still win regardless. So Doran gets played, obviously, and I win this. Uh, the thing that really takes me back is that he moves me down on the King's Court track, and this actually makes me really paranoid that I'm missing something. The Tyrells just burned this last March order in the Reach. I'm not sure. Like, the chat just says GG Stark. So maybe they just passed just to move it along? I don't know. So I'm going to go ahead and attack Flint's Finger. With support, this brings it to a 10 versus 5 fight. I might as well play Eddard. He could play Balin, which would negate it. But even with Balin, he wouldn't win this. Okay. Good, I won this. I always get super nervous when I take the seventh castle or finish out a game thinking that I'm gonna lose because I oversaw some really minor detail somewhere. And that does get me my seven castles. So it, it's a bit of a cliche. Those are, I think, the go-to seven castles for Stark to get in order to win. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more playthroughs or just strategies for various games. And also feel free to leave a comment below if you want to share your thoughts. I hope you have a good day. Bye.